Hi, I'm Dr. Montgomery here to go through another problem uh, looking at uh, resistor-based uh, circuit uh, schematics and how we can analyze the circuit um, and figure out the various quantities of voltage current. And in this case, we're going to be looking at the power, power dissipated or power absorbed by various elements. So I've broken down this problem into five different parts that we'll work through. Uh, so what we want to do is evaluate what is the power being absorbed or dissipated by each one of these given elements. So the three ohm resistor as indicated here, the one ohm resistor indicated here, the three volt source should be right here, the 10 volt source here, and the five amp source uh, 5 amp current source right here. So let's get started with the first um, uh, looking at what, what's happening with the 3 ohm resistor uh, as indicated here. Okay, so if we look uh, at first, you know, sometimes you know you might get a little uh, bombarded by seeing a lot of various elements and really confused as to where to start. The recommendation I have is always to kind of look at what's the easiest uh, mode to work at first. And so if we look at here, what is on my three ohm resistor, we know that in order to figure out power, I need to know something about the voltage or the current for the resistor, the voltage across the resistor or the current through the resistor in order to find the power. So in this case, I figure out what do I know? Well, let's see, do I know what current is flowing through my three ohm resistor? Um, well, I, ha I know I have a five amp uh, current source right here, but I don't really know the current flowing through this resistor because I know that that five amps is going to be divided between this branch and some of it's going in this branch. So I don't really know the current. But do I know the voltage? Well, in this case, I do because we see that the terminals of this resistor are being directly shared with the, current, with the voltage source that I have here, which, of course, as we know, means that that is in parallel, which means also that the voltage across that 3 ohm resistor is going to be equivalent to what's across this voltage source. So because I have the voltage indicated as 3 volts here, I know that for just this first part, first part for part A, I have that the power across my 3 ohm resistor here, I can just use V squared over R. So let me just go ahead and maybe indicate this here. V squared over R will tell us power, or we know that power will be tell us by I squared R. In this case, we have the voltage. So the voltage is my 3 volts squared over the value of that resistor, which is 3 ohms. And this would work out to give us a power dissipated of 3 watts. Okay, so that's the power that's being dissipated by this 3 ohm resistor here specifically. Okay, so let's move on to figure out looking at the 1 ohm resistor that's sitting right up here at the top. Okay, so for part B uh, with the 1 ohm resistor, one quick correction, uh, the current source here, I've changed the direction, a little minor uh, uh, error on my part for part A, but didn't affect part A in, in any way, anyway, in any case. So for Figuring out what the power is across or being dissipated by my 1 ohm resistor, again, I have to figure out, well, what is the current flowing through it or what's the voltage across it? In this case, I don't have any direct voltage source across it as I did for the 3 ohm resistor. Uh, but in this case, I see that I have several current sources that are coming into or out of the node that ties into this 1 ohm resistor here. So I can uh, apply a KCL type of equation to figure out what the current flow through my 1 ohm resistor here which I'll indicate as current I1. So we know that, for again, for KCL, the sum of all currents leaving or entering a node have to sum to zero. So one way of writing that is to put all of the inputs on or the incoming currents on one side of the equation, all the outgoing currents on the other side, and we know that those have to be equal to each other. So we saw, you see which currents are coming into this node uh, up here. So in general, I'll just say this is node one at the very top of the circuit. We have a three amp uh, source and a four amp source coming in, so that'll be on one side, three plus four amps. And this has to equal, uh, be equal to the currents that are traveling out, which in this case is this five amp source that's already defined and this uh, I1, so I1 value that we're trying to figure out. So we'll say I1 plus five amps. So doing the math here, we would see that I1 is equal to two amps. So now again, that we know the current that's traveling through the one ohm resistor here, we can calculate the power, again, using the common expression. In this case, we'll use I squared R. So the power through my one ohm resistor will be two amps squared times one ohm, which would simply be, of course, just four watts, right? So we have four watts of power dissipation from my one ohm resistor there. Okay, so let's move on to looking at uh, part C, which is the three volt source indicator right here. 
So in this case, for part C and, and figuring out what the power dissipation or absorbed by my three volts voltage source is, um, starts to get a little bit more tricky because again, um, in this case, there's no direct, it's not a resistor, so I can't apply these expressions here, right? Uh, so therefore I need to figure out what is the current that's being flow, uh, flowing from or into this voltage source. And really the only way I need to do, or I can do that is by looking at all the currents uh, throughout the other parts of my circuit in order to figure out what the current specifically through this one branch is. Okay, so we know that the current um, through each of these branches is, has been defined. We figured out what this current I1 was in the part uh, B here, and these two current sources are defined. Uh, we don't know though, or we haven't figured out yet exactly what the current flow through each of these resistors are, and we'll need that in order to apply a KCL equation at this node right here. That would tell us what the current flow through my three volt source is, all right? So first let's solve for the current, um, let's say through this six ohm resistor here, which I'll indicate as I2. So for this current uh, I2, we can simply apply uh, Ohm's law. So uh, because again, this three volt source is in parallel, or it's uh, directly connected across this six ohm resistor. So that's why I can apply this rule, uh, or Ohm's law rather, so that it would simply be three volts over my six ohm resistance here. Uh, giving me one half of an amp, right? And if I do something very similar for through the three ohm resistor, I'm gonna indicate this as, let's say I3, then I would know that I3 would be equal to, again, still three volts across that uh, three ohm resistor, divided by three ohms would give me one amp of current. Okay, so now that I know I have the half amp and the one amp for these two currents specifically, I already know all the others. Uh, I'll just write again I1 from, again, the previous uh, part was two amps. I can now write a KCL equation at this node, I'll indicate as node two specifically, to figure out what the current flow here through my three volt source is, um, which I will indicate as I4, let's say. So again, to write my KCL equation, I add up all of the currents that are coming into my node, and I put that on one side, and I add up all the currents that are traveling out of my node, and I put that on the other side. And so let's do that right now. So all the currents that are coming into, so I have I1, so I got two amps. Let's see, plus I have five amps coming in, plus five amps. Um, and that looks like all the currents that I have coming into this node two. So I know that that has to balance with all the currents that are coming out of the node, which is what we have three amps here. Um, coming out, I have I2, which is half an amp, so plus one half amp, uh, plus I4, which is our unknown, and then plus this current I3, which we found up here is one amp, so plus one amp, all right? Sorry, well, delineation there. Okay, so if we do the simple math here, we would get a quantity of I4 being equal to, uh, should be negative two and one half amps, okay? Or I'm sorry, this will actually be positive two and a half amps. Okay, so positive two and a half amps for the current traveling from positive to negative uh, current I4 through that three volt, four, three volt source. And so let's use that now to figure out the power uh, dissipated or absorbed by that source. Okay, so using this current that we have through the three volt source here, um, here again, I simply know that the power uh, being delivered or absorbed by that source has to be equal to the current times the voltage. Uh, in this case, the current is the two and a half amps that we just found, amps times the voltage of that source, which is three volts, um, which would gives a, give us 15 halves uh, watts, right? So we'll indicate that here. So now what you might uh, kind of be asking yourself is, well, why is this voltage source actually have a positive uh, power output? Because typically when we've talked about it, we say that resistors and other uh, load bearing uh, circuit elements are what's absorbing power and typically the sources are what's delivering power. However, there are certainly cases where a voltage source could be absorbing power um, such as if it's a battery and I'm, the circuit is being designed to charge the battery, then I'm actually inputting power, and so it is a positive quantity. Be, and again, that's sort of indicated by, again, looking at the, you have to pay attention to the polarity 
of that voltage source with respect to the current flow. Here we see that the current's flowing from positive to minus, or sorry, from positive to negative, which would indicate that this needs to be a positive quantity. If it was the reverse, then it would be the more standard approach where we would imagine current flowing out from the positive terminal of the voltage source, okay? All right, so let's move on to part D, our 10 volt source which is indicated um, right here, and figuring out what the power dissipation across uh, that source is. So for the power from the 10 volt source here, I actually have a much easier approach than what we did with the three volt source because of course the voltage is already defined for us. And in fact, the current through the branch that has that voltage source is defined by the current source given in the diagram. So here again, just using P equals current times voltage, I have my current of four amps times my voltage of 10 volts, um, which would give me the quantity. But again, now we need to ask ourselves, should this be a positive quantity or a negative quantity? Are we uh, absorbing power or are we delivering power? Well, in this case, we note that the flow of the current is traveling out of the positive uh, terminal of my voltage source. So in fact, this would be a negative quantity or you could alternatively look at it, at, it, at it as saying that the current is traveling into the negative terminal and uh, then there would be negative either way you uh, want to think about it is fine. Uh, the result would be the same, indicating a power uh, being delivered to the circuit of negative 40 watts, okay? So now again, in contrast to our three volt source here, obviously the 10 volt source is really providing power to the circuit. Whereas again, that three volt source is actually absorbing some of the power uh, that's uh, flowing through the circuit as well. So now let's move on to the final part, uh, part E, which is the power from uh, this five amp source right up here. Okay, so now looking at the current source here, um, again, we need to figure out, uh, because it's a, a, a source of current or voltage, we need to figure out what the voltage is in this case. We already know what the current is. And in order to find the voltage across that five amp resistor, I mean, there's no voltage source directly tied across it, so there's nothing to clearly indicate what it should be. But we do have this resistor uh, that is in parallel with that current source which we had previously figured out what the current flowing through that resistor was. This was I1. We had found back, I think, in uh, part B, that to be two amps. So if we can figure out what the voltage is here through that one ohm resistor, uh, simply using Ohm's law, that would then tell us what the voltage is across our uh, five amp um, current source, right? So of course, V equals IR for Ohm's law. So two amps times our one ohm resistor gives us the value of two volts for uh, that's two volts here plus to minus, okay, across that current source. And so therefore the power across that five amp source is going to be equal to two volts times the value of the current, five amps. And again, we ask ourselves, well, should it be positive or negative? And in this case, we see that um, because of the relationship of the polarity of the voltage, to the, uh, well actually, the, yeah, the, looking at the current flow that we had defined through current I1, and then relative to the polarity of the voltage, that would indicate that this should in fact be a positive quantity, which would tell us that this is then 10 watts of, being, of power, again here being absorbed by the source rather than uh, delivered as in the case from part D. Okay, and so then this, uh, yeah, by doing everything that we've done, we've basically solved for all the currents and voltages in this circuit, and then again, gone the step further to figure out what actually the power is versus the various elements. Of course, we didn't go through every single element, but all the rest of them should be pretty self-explanatory from there. So thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you on the next video.